Podcast, episode 15 for May 2023, The Tenth Life by Cheryl R. Hayes. Hello, and welcome to CatsCast, your monthly feline fiction podcast. I'm your editor and host, Laura Perlman. This month, I'm happy to bring you The Tenth Life by Cheryl R. Hayes. This story is a CatsCast original, and it's Cheryl's first professional short story sale. Our author this week is Cheryl R. Hayes. Cheryl R. Hayes can be found untangling plot threads or the yarn her three cats have been playing with. She is equally likely to be shooing one of them off the keyboard as she is working on her novels and short stories. In addition to writing, she is a cosplayer focusing on knit and crochet costumes. You can find her on the web at www.cherylrhayes.com. Our narrator this week is Alethea Contis. New York Times best-selling author Alethea Contis is a princess, storm chaser, and adventurer. She has written over 20 books and 40 short stories, including Alpha Oops, The Day Z Went First, Enchanted, and Prince Philip's Birthday Waltz, Disney. Alethea is the recipient of the Jane Yolen Midlist Author Grant, the Scribe Award, the Garden State Teen Book Award, and two-time winner of the Jellet Burgess Children's Book Award. She has been twice nominated for both the Andre Norton Nebula and the Dragon Award. Alethea also narrates stories for multiple award-winning online magazines and contributes regular YA book reviews to NPR. Born in Vermont, she currently resides on the space coast of Florida with her teddy bear Charlie. Find out more about Princess Alethea at alethiacontest.com. Now curl up on your favorite pillow and listen closely because there's something we need to tell you. The Tenth Life by Cheryl R. Hayes Narrated by Alethea Contis I sit curled on my favorite pillow. My fluffy tail is tucked over my nose, so I form a circle of perfect warmth. I am content. My servant is out of the apartment she keeps for me. Something has been wrong with her lately. She looks at my pillow and bursts into tears. My attempts at comforting her by winding between her ankles and bumping my head against her shoulder have been ignored. But during the last few days, she's changed. She's been happier. There was a new set of food and water dishes decorated with black paw prints on gleaming white ceramic. Balls festooned with feathers, plush mice, and crinkle foil balls lay scattered on the floor. There is a brand new litter box filled with this strange yellow plant-smelling litter instead of the clay I prefer. The door rattles and opens. My servant steps into the room, all smiles and cooing in a low voice. I uncurl my tail, stand and arch my back, and let out an extravagant yawn. She is carrying the plastic box that I associate with going to that place where my dignity is assaulted in creative ways. She calls it the V-E-T when she thinks I am within hearing range. She doesn't comprehend my hearing range extends beyond the room I am in. What poor creatures cat servants are if they have such limited, dulled senses. Back to the box. She puts it on the floor and opens the door. The fur following the curve in my spine spikes as I shift from yawn to hiss. I can smell what is in the box before my eyes confirm it. The creature takes a hesitant step out of the box. My servant, my loyal, loving servant, has brought another cat into my territory. Specifically, a barely weaned, orange, tabby kitten. The kitten reacts in kind when he sees me. He stands up on the tips of his toes, his fur fluffs completely, and he lets out something that sounds like air escaping from a balloon. He fixes me with an eye-locked stare, as if I could be intimidated by the little puffball. My servant scoops the kitten up. Whiskers, it's okay. 
she whispers as she tucks the kitten under her chin. She doesn't cuddle me like that anymore. She puts him down by the food dish. Whiskers positions himself at the food dish where he could keep an eye on me. My servant sits down on the floor next to him, cooing and stroking him. I curl on the couch, tail wrapped around my paws, trying not to show how her betrayal stings. This kitten is the most horrible thing to happen to me. My servant spends the next few days acclimatizing the new kitten, this whiskers, to my territory. Whiskers spends the time exploring every surface he can reach and every space he can squeeze into. When something startles him with its newness, he reacts by hissing and spitting to assert his dominance. He even attempts to intimidate me, as if such a thing were possible. Whiskers arches his back and fluffs his tail as he lets out another balloon hiss. It makes him look like one of the dust balls the dreaded vacuum cleaner devours in a roar of wind. When he does that, my servant looks worried. Although most of her speech is unintelligible sounds, there are a few words I have been able to translate. I have heard her using the words mice and rats to explain the kitten's reactions. It's another blow to my ego. She should know better to think that I would allow prey animals to take up residence. Then there is the food situation. Once, my servant served me delicious wet food befitting my station. Now, in that gaudy black and white bowl is dry kibble. Just seeing it sends shooting pains through my teeth. Whiskers can't get enough of it and gobbles it down every time almost before it is poured into the bowl. I am not hungry, but it is still annoying for her to forget me. When Whiskers is done eating, I kick the kibble out of the bowl and attempt to bury it, despite there being no dirt on the carpet. My servant, instead of providing the proper food, yells at Whiskers for making a mess. At least she dumps the kibble in the garbage, where it belongs. Do you want to play, princess? I flick my tail in annoyance. I had hoped that Whiskers would remain awed by my sounds of displeasure and keep his distance. It worked for about two weeks. Although, when my servant is sitting on the other end of the couch, watching the box with the smaller servants trapped inside, or when she leaves on one of her mysterious errands, Whiskers seeks out my companionship. I heave my chest in a long-suffering sigh and give him the same answer I have the last six times he asked. No. Whiskers bounces from the top of the cat tree to the floor in three easy leaps. Another bound and he is on the cushion next to me. I remember when I could make it to the top of the couch in one easy jump. Sixteen years are hard on a body. Come on, he begs. Whiskers turns away from me and looks back over his shoulder. His tail lashes back and forth beneath my nose. Play! I cannot resist the lure of something fluffy wiggling so close at paw. I swat at his tail. Whiskers purrs in delight and bolts, long hind legs almost overtaking his front legs as he scrambles across the floor. The instinct to chase wells up inside and I launch myself off the cushion. We race around the room, off chairs and across the coffee table. The pile of mail I run over flutters to the floor. From there we launch ourselves into a reclining chair to bounce onto the mantel over the fireplace. Whiskers dashes through it and weaves easily among the knickknacks. I am not that graceful. Like I've said, 16 years are hard on a body. It doesn't help that before I leap, a white light flickers into existence. Distracted, I pull up, shortening my jump. My forepaws land on the mantle, but my hind paws barely make the edge. I scramble forward, seeking balance, and send a figurine crashing to the floor. My servant raises her head at the sounds of shattering porcelain. Whiskers, no! 
She raises her hand. I know what is in it, and I scramble for my cushion on the couch. Whiskers doesn't. He gets the full force of the stream of water in his face. Whiskers squeaks and squeezes beneath the couch to get away from the spray. When my servant returns her attention to the box, he slinks out from his hiding place and joins me on his cushion. What did I do? He wails. Nothing. It wasn't your fault. Without thinking, I start a comforting chest-deep rumble. I lick behind his ears. Whiskers leans into me and purrs in return until he falls asleep. He is warm, and despite my best efforts, I am soon asleep next to him. It was the dog's fault that my servant became nervous. She had a male friend, whom I graciously allowed to visit, even if it meant bringing his smelly, slobbery dog with us. Barkley, as the brown-furred creature was known, stood five times taller than I and had less than one-tenth of my grace. He bumbles into the room and sniffs every square inch. At least he was polite enough not to attempt to claim it in the traditional way of canines. At our first meeting, he attempted to convince that he is my superior. He quickly learned that it was the other way around. Whiskers has no way of knowing how easy it is to put the dog in his place. Barkley swaggers into the room. He ignores me and focuses on the kitten, breath bellowing through his twitching nose. Whiskers arches his back, every hair standing on end. His go-away hiss is many times more intense than any I have heard him produce before. He's frightened, and like any predator, Barkley knows it. The dog stalks toward the kitten, mouth wide open, tongue lolling over ivory teeth. Whiskers backs into the corner. My servant and the dog's master stand by, watching not attempting to intervene. Cowards. I tense as Whiskers squeaks out a nervous meow. Barkley holds his tail high as he wags it. The dog is enjoying terrorizing Whiskers. I will not suffer such actions in my domain. In a fluid movement, I slide down from the cushion and insert myself between Whiskers and Barkley. Unlike Whiskers, my fur is flat and my ears and tail high. I have no need to make myself look bigger because we all know who is in charge here. Barkley has forgotten and needs to be reminded. The dog blinks and pushes his muzzle closer to me. I can feel the hot breath stinking of dog food stir my fur. I wait for the right moment. My paw leaves a blur of an afterimage when I lash out. My claws score the tender nose, slicing through the flesh with only the slightest resistance. He yelps and runs to his master, tail tucked between his legs. I turn my attention to Whiskers, who is peeking out from behind me. The kitten is still crouched, but his fur is no longer spiked. Remember that trick, I explain. Patches, the cat who was here before me, showed me how to handle any dog. Dogs are nothing more than big bullies, and not that bright. Swat him once on the nose and he will leave you alone. What about them? Whiskers asks. My servant and Barkley's master are both crouched down examining the dog's nose. Words float toward me. He was two feet away. Whiskers should not have been able to reach him. Whiskers didn't even move. I understand their words, but not why they are puzzled. Did they not see me strike out at Whiskers' oppressor? My servant and the dog's master leave, taking Barkley, tail tucked firmly between his legs where it belonged, with them. The next few days, my servant is nervous, although she tries to hide it. She feeds Whiskers plays with him with the fake mouse on the string, and plops him into her lap while she watches the box with the smaller servants trapped inside. I do notice she keeps one eye on my pillow as she scratches Whiskers' ears. She has the look of a cat that can smell a dog is in the room, but doesn't know where it is. 
She's watching the box with Whiskers sprawled across her legs when the doorbell rings. We all jump. Whiskers, spooked by the jerky motions, runs over to me to cuddle at my side. I give him a reassuring lick as I watch my servant open the door. A middle-aged woman with dishwater blonde hair steps into the house. Thank you for coming, my servant says. Her voice sounds relieved, but the stiffness of her back betrays her nervousness. It's no problem, the stranger says. She looks around as if searching for a mouse hidden in the walls. She closes her blue eyes and draws in a deep breath. I'm not sensing anything malevolent like a demon or chaotic like a poltergeist. The energy here is peaceful. She opens her eyes and gestures toward us, smiling. I'm certain there is nothing negative in this house. Otherwise, your two cats wouldn't be so mellow. My servant freezes like a mouse trying to avoid my notice. I only have a kitten, she whispers. Her eyes dart to me and whiskers on our cushion. Princess died earlier this year. The stranger meets my eyes. I see. Give me a moment. She walks over to me and whiskers and kneels down to our level. When she speaks to me, she doesn't move her lips. Hello, my name is Mary. My head jerks up. She's not speaking in the squawks that pass for human language, nor has she done the impossible feat of learning to speak cat, despite her lack of feline features. Hello, I am Princess Precious Cuddly Snuggles Von Fluffy Pants III, I announce primly, giving all the titles my servant has used to address me. You may call me Princess. I give the kitten a quick lick behind the ear. This is Whiskers. Princess Whiskers, Mary says. She reaches forward and scratches Whiskers behind the ears. While Whiskers purrs, she looks at me. May I ask what you are doing here, Princess? I sniff in disdain. The answer should be obvious. This is my home. Princess. Mary says with soft sympathy. This is no longer your home. You are dead. My tail twitches in annoyance. Of course I know I'm dead. I've been much more comfortable since my joints stopped aching. Why would that change things? Mary's eyes widen, as if she didn't expect that answer. She gestures to the bright light in the corner. Don't you want to cross over to the next plane of existence? My tail twitches again. I'm an indoor cat, I say, using the phrase I've heard my servant say to the V-E-T. I don't go outside. I had stuck my head into the light once and looked around, since curiosity could no longer do anything to me. Not a couch or food dish to be seen. All I could see was grass and heard the sound of running water. Outside. Ugh. Yes, the light leads to outside, in a way, Mary said. It's a wonderful place with soft grass, plenty of food, crystal clear water, and loved ones to play with. I have all of that here, I respond, except for the dog, and he doesn't stay long. I glance sidelong at the kitten next to me. Besides, someone has to teach Whiskers how things are done. Mary looks at Whiskers. I get the impression that she is communicating with him, but I can't hear them. I can feel the kitten press harder against my side as he lets out a nervous meow. I don't want Princess to leave. I purr to reassure him and lick the top of his head. I'm not going anywhere, Whiskers. I hope that is the truth. While my servant most often caters to my desires, on occasion she dares to place me in the plastic box and take me out of the apartment despite my vocal displeasure. I look at Mary and twitch my tail, willing her not to disagree. Mary's smile broadens. Let me see what I can work out. Things are much better now. I still chase whiskers and, on occasion, allow whiskers to chase me. I am more careful about knocking things over, but I still do on occasion. 
My servant doesn't yell at Whiskers or squirt him unless she witnesses him do something. She still puts out the kibble for Whiskers, and I have stopped trying to bury it, no matter how strongly my palate insists it is an affront to my senses. Barkley visits on occasion, but he has learned firsthand that the kitten has sharper claws than I do. Whiskers has not been backed into a corner again. The white light still shows up with some regularity. I consider it on these occasions. I am curious about the field and the river, what it would be like. Mary assures me that I would not be punished for leaving if I wished to go. I have declined to do so. Usually it flickers into existence when I am lazing in the warmth of a sunbeam and cannot be bothered to move. The few times I start to put my head inside it for another look around, whiskers trills in fear. I back out and purr my reassurance as I return to our spot on the cushion and groom him. Whiskers continues to grow. He has doubled in size since I first met him. He is learning everything that I can teach him, paying close attention to my lessons. Soon he will be bigger than I am. When he is, and when I have nothing more to teach him, I will go through that white light. For now, I am content to play with him and groom him. This kitten is not the most horrible thing to happen to me, after all. It seems to happen overnight, but it takes more than one. Whiskers grows from a gangly kitten, all paws and ears and too long tail, into a sleek, graceful cat. He is adventurous, boldly stalking toy mice across the floor or jumping three quarters up the wall after the red dot. He still snuggles by me for the occasional ear grooming, but he has claimed the other end of the couch, next to where my servant sits. He purrs, eyes slitted in an expression of feline contentment. He is no longer the unsure kitten scared of his own shadow. He no longer has any need of me. It is time. I stand up and stretch, my back bowing into an arch. I leap to the floor in a smooth motion. Whiskers tracks my movement but doesn't move from his spot. My servant has long since gotten used to Whiskers playing with something she cannot see, so she ignores him. I twine myself around her ankles in one last goodbye. She looks down for a moment and frowns. Then a sad smile crosses her lips. That is as close to a farewell as she will be able to give me. I can feel Whiskers' eyes on me as I walk, tail erect, toward the light. I hear him drop to the ground and trot to catch up to me. What are you doing? he asks, as he matches my pace. It's not what I am doing, I answer. It's where I'm going. Whiskers leaps ahead and blocks my path. No, he says. You can't go. I need you here. No, you don't. Affection and pride suffuse my voice. You haven't needed me since you caught that mouse that dared to poke a whisker in the kitchen. But what about your servant? Your servant now, I say. And you will take good care of her. I've trained her well for you, as you will for whoever comes after you. Like you said Patches did for you. Whiskers crouches, tail curled tight around his body. For a moment, he looks like the lost kitten I saw tumble out of the carrier. Will I see you again? Someday, I think. I groom his ears, paying attention to the spots he likes licked. Goodbye, Whiskers. I press my forehead to his in a final farewell. Whiskers responds with a purr almost as deep as my own. Goodbye, princess. This time, he does not stop me when I walk around him. The portal flares brighter as I near it. This time, I do not stop at its corona and peer into it, but continue forward, smoothly, as if I were patrolling my domain. I step into the warmth and light. One moment my paws are on the cool firmness of a hardwood floor. The next moment they are on grass. I can hear water tinkling nearby. I look around. 
It's not a field of softness, but a lawn of spiky grass in front of a house poking the tender pads of my toes. The water is not the sound of a river, but a dirty gutter flowing into the sewer. The air is not hinted with catnip, but scented with lung-choking exhaust. Outside is every bit as horrible as I thought it would be. I feel very small and very scared by the mistake I made in trusting Mary's description of what I would find in the light. I let out a soft mew of distress. I am shocked at how tiny my voice sounds. Then I hear two female voices discussing something. Did you hear something? Yeah, Mom, I think it came from over here. Warm hands pick me up. I fit easily into two cupped palms. I realize I am a lot smaller than I was, stubby legs and head almost as big as my body. I let out another soft mew. Fingers scratch behind my ears. Poor thing must have been abandoned by her mother, a girl's voice says. Can't leave her out here, she won't last the night, the other one responds. Let's bring her inside and get her something to eat. We can take her to the vet and get her checked out tomorrow. See if she's microchipped and look at the lost and found boards. Her fingers join in the scratching. I purr my approval. I said I wanted a kitten. The girl cradles me close to her chest. I know, honey, I just didn't expect to find one on our doorstep. I snuggle into my new servant's embrace. As she carries me into my new home, I wrap my tail over my nose to form a perfect circle of warmth. I am content. And we're back. That was The Tenth Life by Cheryl R. Hayes. One thing I loved about this story was that it turned out that Princess knew she was dead all along, but using typical cat logic, didn't see why that should change anything. Cheryl shared some story notes with us. She says, This story was written shortly after I adopted my current cats, Julius, Sherbert, and Popsicle. I was still mourning the loss of Xena, a grand diva of a tortoise shell who lived to be 17 years old. As my new trio grew up, there were times I could swear I saw an adult cat shepherding my kittens out of the corner of my eye. And the core idea for what would become the tenth life bloomed. This story hit a little close to home for me. Thunder has been gone for almost three months now, and I still sometimes see him out of the corner of my eye. In my case, though, I know it's an illusion and not a ghost. A real ghost thunder would be much less unobtrusive and much more bossy towards both my remaining cat, Seppi, and towards me. Cheryl said this about her cats. Julius, Sherbert, and Popsicle are my nine-year-old cats. I often refer to the three siblings as my alpha readers because of their tendency to sit on my keyboard or my chest as I'm typing. My mother and I said that we didn't want either orange or tortoise shell kitties because of mourning past cats. Of course, we ended up with an orange male, Julius, an orange female, Sherbert, and a tortoise shell female, Popsicle. Today's cover art is by Matt Dovey, featuring Lizzie, who's still learning to love 13 and some years after being rescued. Or at least, still learning how to express love without using claws. For cat pictures, cat story recommendations, and more, follow Cats Cast Pod on Twitter. We'd love to hear from you there or on the Escape Artist Discord server, Facebook, or Instagram. We'll be back next month with episode 16 on the Escape Artist premium content feed, and in two months with episode 17 on both feeds. In the meantime, you can find more narrative goodness on our weekly sister podcasts, Escape Pod for Science Fiction, Podcastle for Fantasy, Pseudopod for Horror, and Cast of Wonders for YA. Today's episode is brought to you by audio producers Wilson Fowley and Dave Robison, associate editor Tarver Nova, and me, editor Laura Perlman. Our opening and closing music is Easy Lemon by Kevin McLeod. Cat's Cast is a production of the Escape Artists Foundation, a U.S. 501c3 nonprofit. This episode is distributed under the Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License. 
which means you can't change it or sell it, but you can share it as much as you like. Cat's Cast relies on listener donations, so thank you so much if you've already donated. You can support us and all the other EA podcasts by donating via patreon.com slash EA podcasts or through the website escapeartists.net. You can also help us out by leaving a review or rating at Apple Podcasts or wherever you normally leave those things. Cat's Cast is distributed monthly on the Escape Artist premium content feed. A separate public Cat's Cast feed gets a subset of those episodes. More details can be found in the show notes or at escapeartist.net slash catscast. Thanks for listening, and until next time, we wish you all the purrs. Thank you.